Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at another all-in-one self-hosted solution called Umbral. So like a lot of the videos that I do on this channel, this idea actually came from Reddit. I was scrolling the r slash self-hosted subreddit and somebody asked if Umbrel was a good option. Now I'd never heard of Umbrel, so of course I wanted to look into it and see kind of what it was. And uh, when I did, I was brought here to umbrel.com. Com. And this is kind of uh, the, you know, the, obviously their homepage. We've got a dashboard, kind of a demonstrative dashboard to show what you would expect to see on, on your dashboard once yours is all set up and ready to go. Uh, they've got an app store, it looks like. They've got community, they're hiring, and install now. Now, the thing I really liked about Umbrel uh, specifically is that it is very, very easy to install. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that here in a little bit, but it is just a one command install and you're up and running in just a few minutes, of course, depending on your internet speed and your hardware and, and things like that. But uh, even down here, if I can get, there we go. Uh, this will run even on a Raspberry Raspberry Pi. So basically anything Ubuntu or Debian based, you shouldn't have any issues installing this on that. So basically we scroll down, de-Google yourself. Of course, they're they're kind of giving the, the perks of self-hosting. Um, and then of course we've got, you know, some of the different things that you can do with it, like Nextcloud and Prism, Photo Prism. Um, but what, what kind of, what I thought was interesting about this is this is a uh, very heavily uh, crypto and Tor inspired. Uh, so, so basically, you, like it says here, you can run your own Bitcoin nodes, your own Lightning nodes, connect your favorite wallets, um, and of course, do things like Pi Hole Tail Scale is another remote option, a remote access option that is that you can uh, uh, install an app for. Uh, it also has things like Home Assistant and just a bunch of different apps. We'll take a look at the App Store here in just a little bit. Um, but there's lots of apps in here. Uh, you can add your own apps to the App Store. Uh, there's a bit of a process. It isn't quite as intuitive as other systems make it with, you know, a Docker Compose like they're showing here, which I kind of, I'm kind of bummed about because I like to be able to just do what I want to do with my own self-hosted solutions. But I get kind of what they're going for. They want it to be a very tight knit, closed environment, which I, I get, especially from a privacy and uh, security perspective. Uh, so basically here, install on a Raspberry Pi 4 again, anything that installs Linux, run Umbral on Ubuntu or Debian, or on any hardware or VM, Mac or Windows by running this command. We're gonna do that here in just a little bit. But of course, like I said, I do want to actually kind of go through Umbral uh, just real quick to show you what it looks like and how it works, that sort of thing. Um, so basically one click OS updates, monitor everything, app and permission dependencies are taken care of. Um, authentication for all apps, I actually really dig this. Uh, basically, um, from my experience when I was using it yesterday and kind of testing some things out, um, you're actually able to access this remotely via an Onion link, uh, so you will need a Tor set up for that. But when I tried to log into one of the apps that I installed via Umbral, I was actually taken to the Umbral homepage where I had to log in first uh, before I was able to access that app. So I actually really do appreciate uh, the level of security that they've got tied into this. Um, so yeah, really, really dig that. Um, you can run uh, app updates, uh, real-time app updates rather, built in the open, so you can actually view the source code on GitHub. I know uh, I talked about a solution here the other day where it wasn't open source and some people had some issues with that. Uh, this absolutely is, so hopefully uh, that will uh, help appease the masses in, in some sort of way. They've got lots of stuff down here for, you know, mentions and tweets and stuff like that on Twitter. And then of course you can get more information by signing up for their newsletter here at the bottom. Um, but as I mentioned, I've already got this installed. I used a, a Proxmox container. Of course, like I said, you can install this basically any way you want, as long as you're using Debian or Ubuntu, uh, you can put this on a Raspberry Pi or a VM or whatever. So lots of different options on how you can uh, set this up. So let's jump over to here. This is my desktop. Of course, I changed the wallpaper or not my desktop. This is this is my login page. What am I thinking? So I'm going to type in my password. <clears throat> and we'll get logged in here. Um, and of course you can say here, it says, good morning, DB Tech. I've got some apps in here um, and we can of course manage apps. If we click that, uh, I could uh, uninstall these just with a simple click. I do appreciate that. Um, there is an app store, like I'd mentioned before. Oops, that's the homepage. Here's the app store. So just kind of some, some generic stuff. I, I say generic, that's rude. I don't mean generic, but just kind of some of the general stuff that we're, we're talking about here. Agora, where you can set up uh, kind of your, uh, kind of a little store to sell files for Bitcoins, uh, Nextcloud, Photo Prism, Sync Thing, Code Server, Git EA. A lot of this other stuff below here gets into some, some Bitcoin and some crypto stuff, some blockchain stuff uh, that I'm not super familiar with. I never got into the blockchain thing. Uh, I know I'm behind the times and that probably makes me 
Anyway, so uh, we've got some social stuff in here. Uh, we've got some automation stuff like Home Assistant, Node Red uh, for both standard and Bitcoin. Again, some networking stuff like Pi-hole, uh, Simple Torrent, Tor Snowflake, Proxy, Tailscale, Uptime Kuma, and uh, Urbit. I don't even know what Urbit is. Let's, let's actually look at that real quick. It is a uh, personal server for self-sovereign personal network computing. Interesting. So that, that might be interesting to take a look at some point if we ever wanted to do that. Um, but, baby, ah, but basically that's, uh, let's scroll down to where we were. Um, we've got um, some explorers. We've got some, some wallet servers, uh, Vault Warden. And of course, like it says here, you can add your own app to the Umbrella app store. So, uh, so that's kind of what's on here. Again, adding custom apps, things that aren't part of this is a bit of a process. Uh, we're not going to get into that because that is way outside the scope of an introduction to, uh, to Umbrel. But, uh, basically if we wanted to, let's, let's tell you what, let's, let's find, let's find something up here. Uh, let's install Git EA, or at least try to install Git EA. Basically, this is kind of your own personal Git repository, uh, self-hosted Git service. Uh, so we'll click install. <clears throat> And it says installing, this may take a few minutes. Um, so uh, I guess while this is installing, this is kind of an interesting time, I think, to mention that most of this is actually being run in Docker. Uh, basically all of this stuff is being installed via Docker containers. Uh, in fact, if we go over <clears throat> to here, let's do, let's do this. I'll get logged in to my Proxmox setup. And then we'll come over here to Umbrella, like so. And then we're gonna go to console. We are already logged in. So I'm gonna do Docker uh, PS like so. And here you can see all of the different uh, Docker containers that are up and running again. Uh, Vault Warden, Tailscale. Uh, we've got some different things for Vault Warden. It looks like some Uptime Kuma stuff that I installed. Uh, so basically it kind of handles all of the Tor stuff behind the scenes anytime you install something uh, that can be accessed via Tor. Now, I will say that uh, like for Vault Warden, for instance, when I first installed it um, and, and I tried to access it, it's like, hey, uh, this needs to be accessed on the Tor network because uh, because Vault Warden requires uh, an SSL in order to function properly uh, and Tor handles that uh, on, on its end. So that's that's kind of what's going on with the, the Vault Warden Tor server is so that we can uh, access that remotely. And, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Tor here in a minute. Let's jump back over to here. Uh, it says it's still installing. We'll give this a minute. I did run into a couple of issues trying to install um, a couple of different apps like uh, Pi-hole. Uh, I, I ran into a bit of an issue with, uh, even after letting it run for, for quite a while, uh, I do want to kind of just let this chill in the background. So I think what I'm gonna do is just open this up uh, in a different tab here so that we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, that is still installing. So let's take a look at the tour stuff just here real, real quick. What we're gonna do, oops. Come on, there we go. We're gonna come down to the bottom to the little settings tab there. Uh, and right here we can say, do we want remote access on or off? You can turn the tour stuff off, um, at least to a certain degree anyway. However, if you do want remote access, you can just uh, copy this. This is a, a tour or an onion URL that was generated. So we're gonna copy that. I'm gonna grab my, my Tor browser over here. I am already connected, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter there. And hopefully, if everything works correctly, I should be I should be able to get to my dashboard from here. It is definitely thinking, hey, Umbrel popped up there. So we'll give this another moment. Of course, Tor is, is notoriously slow um, just because it's doing multiple hops. In fact, uh, what I like about this, if I come up here, I, I'm sure this isn't going to surprise anybody, but here we can see uh, this browser jumped over to the UK, jumped back to the US, jumped to, U to, to Germany, uh, did a bunch of other stuff, and then uh, finally landed on the website. So you can kind of see uh, how that's gonna work. Uh, let's log in. Log in. And we'll give it just a second. And there are our apps. Uh, of course, I can click any of these and hopefully be able to access them again uh, here on the Onion uh, URL or a, a yeah, Onion and an Onion URL there. Um, so here we can see that we've got um, just uh, Bub Had is kind of the end of that. And if I come over here, this is this is very much different than that. Um, so here we can see uh, that it is opening. So let's give this just a second here. Okay, so this is that two-factor authentication that where, where Umbrel kind of interjects itself before you can access the actual application. So while Tor is slower, I do appreciate that they've got this as an option for security purposes. Uh, so let's get logged in using my Umbrel uh, user pass or my password, I guess. Give 
Give this a second to load here. All right, so now it says Uptime Kuma instead of Umbrel, so I appreciate that. That means we're, we're obviously getting somewhere here. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, we're going from uh, here to another, another, Finland's to Netherlands into Estonia. A couple more re relays and then two here. So let's let's close that. Here we go. Here's Uptime Kuma loading. Again, Tor is notoriously slow, so uh, that is kind of one of the things that you're going to have to deal with. Um, but here again, we're, we're prompted with a login. And there we go. Of course, I haven't added anything to this, um, but that's kind of how uh, the Tor portion of this works as far as remote access is concerned. Uh, I do appreciate the way they've done that and kind of built in an extra layer of security uh, for, for authentication before you can even get to the app, uh, much like uh, some third-party services have done uh, that we've talked about in the past. So here we are. Since we're back over here to the settings, uh, we can see that we've got, we're using about 14 gigs of our 69 gigs available. We look at our usage and see what's using uh, what's using our, our, our different amounts of uh, storage, same thing with RAM. Uh, we can drop this down and see uh, the, the system's using 420 megs, Uptime Kuma's using 148, Vault Warden's using 116, and Tailscale is using 19.3. Three. Uh, so I like that they've got that kind of broken out uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what's using uh, your resources. So up here at the top, we've got an option for two-factor authentication. Let's turn that on. Right there uh, is our code, of course. This isn't gonna work for you because I'm gonna blur it. Uh, and of course, there's also uh, this uh, code down here that we can use as well. And then once we've got that registered, we can type in our six-digit uh, two-factor authentication identifier and uh, enable two-factor authentication for our setup. I love that this is built in by default. Uh, Password, we can change our umbrella password. Uh, remote access, of course, we've talked about that. Uh, we can shut down, restart, troubleshoot, uh, or we can check our version for updates. Uh, it is the latest version, so we're good to go there. Uh, so let's close this. Um, so we've looked at, well, so we're on the homepage. We've kind of looked at the app store, uh, our settings. We've got dark mode available. Uh, of course, that doesn't really matter too much, or we can log out. Not a lot going on in here, which I appreciate. This is very, very focused on one thing. So let's come back over to here. Okay, so this is one of those things. Again, I ran into the same issue with Pi-hole, uh, so I'm not sure why some of these things are taking a while to install, um, but they are, unfortunately. Uh, but you can kind of get an idea that um, we, we do have apps installed, we can just click and install some apps. So uh, now that we've kind of taken a look at the gist of how Umbrel works, let's take a look at how easy it is to get Umbrel installed. Okay, just for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to do this in Proxmox, uh, just to keep things uh, easy for me to be able to spin these up and, and do what I got to do with them. So I'm going to come over, I've, I've filled out the first page of our LXC container option. I'm going to click template. Uh, I did on, on the, the one we were just looking at, I did use a Debian 11 standard. This time I think I'm going to use uh, Ubuntu 2204. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go to disks. Again, I'm going to give this 64 gigs, just like I did the last one. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not doing anything with anything else here. CPUs, I'm going to give it a couple of cores. Uh, that's fine. And then uh, I'm going to give it a couple of gigs. Like so. Our network, uh, I'm just going to leave the network alone. Um, our, our DNS, I'm going to do this. And confirm. Like so. And then I'm actually going to say finish. I'm not going to start this just yet because I, now that I think about it, I actually want to shut down the other... Uh, umbrel node that, or, or container that I've got in here so that the the umbrel.local URL doesn't try to conflict with each other. So we'll give this a second once this is up, uh, like it is, we'll go ahead and shut down the other umbrel container and get this one started up. We're gonna go ahead and start our new umbrel2 node. Of course, we're switching from Debian to Ubuntu. So let's see if that gives us any any difference in how that's gonna work. Give this a second to, to spin up here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get logged in. All right, so we are logged into Ubuntu 2204. We're gonna come back over here to the Umbrel website. Uh, we're gonna scroll down. We're just gonna grab uh, that little line right there. Uh, we're gonna come back over. We're going to right, pay, right click and paste and hit enter. Oops, let's do apt install curl now. There we go. Now, uh, once that's done, now we can actually install uh, Umbrel. So let's, let's give that another go. Paste. Enter. Okay, so it's gonna wait 10 seconds. I appreciate that. And it's like, hey, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to change your mind because then after that, we're gonna do this. So here in just a second, it's gonna do it and we'll just kind of hang out and wait until it's done. Um, and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. 
All right, so it looks like we're just getting down to the very end of this where it's actually finally creating all of the uh, containers that we're gonna need for this setup to work. Uh, we can see that the auth is still being created, Nginx, middleware is still being created, but we've got Tor dashboard and manager already up and running. So we're gonna give this a couple more minutes and then hopefully uh, this will come up and uh, we'll be able to get logged into our dashboard. Okay, so here we are. Uh, it's been a few minutes, five, 10 minutes maybe. And here we can see that uh, Umbrella is now accessible at, oh, I didn't actually, that's clever. I didn't actually have to, uh, shut down the other Umbrel instance because it actually changed it to Umbrel 2. So I appreciate that. Uh, of course, we've got also got an IP address there uh, and then escaping status update when not on Umbrel OS, that's fine. So let's pop open a new tab. Let's go to umbrel2.local. Let's put an HTTP in there. Oops, like so, <clears throat> there we go. So now we're gonna be presented with the option to, well, create an account. So we're gonna click start. We're gonna give it an, or I'm gonna uh, create a name here and a password. Now, this one does have a, a 12 character minimum, I think, for the password, so let's go ahead and do that. So the one thing to keep in mind here is what it says right here. Uh, your account information is stored only on your umbrella. Uh, please make sure to back up your password safely as there's no way to restore it. So be aware of that. If you goof this, um, sucks to suck, I guess. So uh, make sure that you know your password uh, when you click create right here. Okay, congratulations, that's it, you're all set. So we're gonna click next. And here we are. Uh, now you can install your first app. Of course, you can view more in the App Store uh, like we took a look at a minute ago. So let's let's come down here and see if maybe this fixed our issue uh, by switching from uh, Debian to Ubuntu. I don't know if this is gonna fix anything, but it's definitely something that I wanted to try. Hey, uh, this is me from later, like after, after anyway. So look, I did some more research and figured out some different things about uh, some issues that I was running into. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop here. So here we are, we're on our, uh, on our Debian version. So what I wanna do is just an LS. Here we can see that we've got a directory called Umbrel. So we're going to CD into Umbrel. And then in here, we've got uh, some different things, uh, different folders and, and, and that sort of thing like scripts. So what we're actually gonna do is manually install a script or manually install an application using a script. So if we come up, so basically it's it's sudo and then scripts apt install. I just did get EDA, get EA, but let's take a look at Pihole and I'm gonna show you why Pihole didn't install. So I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna pull everything that it needs to pull in it here in a couple of minutes, it's going to throw an error and it's gonna tell us exactly what the issue is. And I'm, I'm surprised that it didn't, that, that installing Umbrella didn't fix this. But if we look over here, uh, we can see that uh, port 53 is already in use for DNS. So that's why it couldn't install. We would actually have to manually go in and kill the DNS mask service. I believe it's DNS mask that's doing this. Um, but basically we'd have to go in and kill that service in order to get Pihole to work. So I think that kind of covers uh, what I wanted to cover in this video. And that is just kind of a quick dive into Umbrel, kind of a, a cool little self-hosting solution, of course, primarily directed towards uh, uh, you know, kind of crypto bros, if you want to use that word, that term, whatever. But for, for crypto enthusiasts, um, this might be an interesting opportunity for a self-hosted solution for, for wallets and marketplaces and things like that. Of course, you don't have to use uh, the crypto aspect of the, or the, 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 the Tor uh, slash blockchain aspect of this. If you just wanted to set up, you know, Nextcloud and have it available remotely via like Tailscale or, or the Tor network, you can absolutely do that with just a few clicks and have uh, some different apps set up and ready to go for your own personal use. So let me know again in the comment section what your thoughts are on Umbrel. Uh, if there's anything specific you'd like me to cover in a maybe a follow-up video about Umbrel. Um, but I think with all of that said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me and I will talk to you in the next video.